Let's pray. Lord, just such wonderful words to be able to sing. Lord, as we come to this time of communion, please bless it. Draw us near to you. And uh, Jesus, we want to just make much of you. And it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As we are about to spend time in God's word, we want to make sure everybody actually has a copy of God's word sitting before them. So if you don't currently have one, please raise your hand and the men are going to go ahead and distribute some of the Bibles. And if you don't actually have a Bible, that is yours to keep as a gift. My name is Eric Martin. I am one of the pastors here at Grace Bible Church. And we are going to spend time today in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 21. So please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. This is the time in our service when we get to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It's a time when believers remember Jesus and what he did on the cross, and we get to proclaim his death. We take a little cracker and a little cup of juice that represents the body of Jesus and his blood that was shed at the cross. This is a time for believers, for a time for, for those who know Christ to remember him and remember what he did at the cross. And if you would, by your own admission, say that you're not a believer, this is actually not a time for you. This is a family time that believers get to celebrate. We would simply ask if you, if you say that you would, you're not a believer, we'd simply ask that you just pass that trait by when it comes to you. If you would say that you're a believer or I think I'm a believer, or I'm not sure if I'm a believer, then you need to pay close attention to the passage that we're going to be examining today. Please follow along as I read Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. God's word says, and this is Jesus speaking, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In this passage, Jesus is talking about two groups of people. Those that will go to heaven and those that will go to hell. And just to be clear, this passage is not talking about atheists or agnostics or Muslims or Hindus or Buddhists, people that would openly deny who Jesus truly is. Here, Jesus is talking about those who profess to be Christians. Those that claim Jesus as their Lord and Master and profess to be his slaves and followers. But Jesus tells us that not everybody that claims to be a Christian is a Christian. Not everyone that says they know Jesus actually knows Jesus. He tells us that there are people that have a false profession of faith in Christ. The setting for this passage is the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching his disciples, and here in verse 21, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. He's teaching his disciples that there are people that correctly and rightly identify him for who he truly is, and yet a number of them will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He contrasts this by saying, only those that do the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. A true Christian must be one that does the will of God, that obeys his will as revealed in the word of God. In verse 22, Jesus says that many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Many, not just a few, but many will come to Jesus as he sits in judgment at the end of the age and try to defend themselves. Again, they will address Jesus correctly as Lord, 
And they will even declare to Jesus some of the works that they've accomplished in his name. However, Jesus has none of this. He does not even try to dispute the works that they claim to have done in his name. He simply responds by declaring to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In what sense did Jesus never know them? He's omniscient, so obviously he knew everything about them. But he didn't know them as his followers. These people knew Jesus. They rightly acknowledged and recognized him as the Lord. But Jesus never knew these people. Jesus never acknowledged them or recognized them as belonging to him, as being his followers. However, Jesus does recognize these as the ones who practice lawlessness, ones that work at and accomplish disobedience. He knows them that way. And he has one command for them. Depart from me. Leave. Go away. This is the judge having already rendered his judgment and sending them off to serve their sentence. An eternal sentence of suffering. Revelation tells us the suffering will occur in the lake of fire. These people who thought they were going to heaven are not. In fact, quite the opposite. They're going to suffer in the lake of fire. This passage is about two groups. Two groups of professing Christians that have two very different lives and have two eternal destinations. It's easy for one to profess to be a Christian in our day. It's easy for one to claim to know Jesus, to go to church, to participate in church activities, to spend time even in God's word, and even to be excited about spiritual things. However, well, these are good things. However, these things alone by themselves do not reveal if you are a true Christian. A true Christian is one that has been transformed by God into a new creation. A true Christian is one that by grace through faith alone trusts in what Jesus accomplished at the cross for their forgiveness of sins. A true Christian will bear fruit in keeping with repentance in a life that is serving their new master. And this passage teaches us that a true Christian is one that obeys the Lord. So, some questions. Is your life characterized by obedience to God as revealed in his word? Are you aware of your sins? Do you confess your sins? And by God's grace, do you repent and turn from those sins to Christ? Or as in Romans 8.13 says, are you by the Spirit putting to death the deeds of the body? Are you merely a sayer or are you a doer? Does your profession bear the fruit of the Spirit in your life? If you would say that you're merely a sayer, then please do not take the elements and please talk to me or one of the other pastors. But if you would say that you're a doer, then join us. If you would have any questions about what it means to be a true follower of Christ, please don't sit there and wonder. Please ask questions. Believer, Jesus knows you. He knows you as one of his sheep. And it is only by his grace that you truly know him. And it is only by his grace that you aren't going to be punished for your sins. It is only by his grace that his blood at the cross satisfied the penalty for your sins. And it is only by his grace that you walk in obedience to him. And it's only by his grace that you get to enter the kingdom of heaven on that day. When your hearts are prepared, please 